everybody there he is there he is and ladies and gentlemen next up on my show this woman wrote a, a message on instagram to monique and asked to be on her show on her stand-up show and it worked give it up for miss Corey bell okay sorry guys i got pretty hype on that i'm here Corey bell let me set us all up adam Hunter, uh, here we go. Uh, whoops, hold on. I just gave the audience to me. Corey, can you turn your phone sideways? I will sideways. Okay, boom. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Boom and boom. There we are. Adam, I actually put you in the middle. You look good. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. No, I'm actually, you're good. So, guys, sorry about the quick intro. That was a little crazy. Usually I have uh, uh, my uh, technical director, Holly, who helps me switch the show, but she had a little technical emergency she had to take care of. So thank you guys for being on the show. I'm actually having to switch this live myself, which is pretty cool. Um, but getting into the show, first off, Adam, I want to talk to you because I know you were just uh, chosen for uh, JFL recently. Nice. Uh, no, that was, this, that, was, that, that was two years ago. That was two years ago. Okay, well, you know, Adam, in the coronavirus, <laughs> uh, you know, apocalyptic times two years ago doesn't feel that long ago, does it now? No, but I wasn't <laughs> supposed to go there this year. Like, the coronavirus had nothing to do with me going to JFK. All right, well, I got I got a little, you know, me and my producer, Del Harrison, we put this shit together, man. We Google the best we can. So that's hilarious. No, but, I mean, obviously, Adam, you got, you've been running the dime for – ever uh you know um your comedy show at the dime club which you've had Chappelle drop in i mean yeah. everybody and their mother uh has done that show um what is new with you i mean i know you had a baby recently well your wife did but how, how has that changed you and your material oh a lot i mean it's definitely giving it an endless source of material i definitely um you know if it makes doing the road a lot a lot sadder, you know, but, yeah. uh, right, but like right now, there are a lot of people alone right now with nobody, no wife, no kid. And uh, I'm just so jealous. Uh, because <laughs> I love you, Adam. That is your comedy in a nutshell. I love because, it. wow, uh, I have no free time because we can yeah. uh, we, normally we have a babysitter sometimes. I can do some work, but we don't know where the babysitter has been. Right. Probably with the coronavirus because she's a big slut. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I just been watching my kid like. 20 hours a day, but I'm learning a lot about her, like her name and uh, all kinds of <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of really fun things. No, no it's, it's, it's been crazy. Like I've just been, uh, I, I've been spending more time with my kid and my wife than ever. And I, I love it to death, but I'm ready to do the road for seven years in a row. And yeah, after this, after this I'm, I'm going to come back when she's nine. That's and, hilarious. Uh, so. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam. I'm your, I'm your dad. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. And Adam, you just had uh, your wrestling pilot uh, pin. How is that going? Um, I know you were, tell everybody real quickly, you were what, a three-time state champion in high school or how many? How many? Uh, four-time. I was a four-time um, New England champion in high school. Wow. And then um, it, it was, a, and yeah, it was a prep school class A New England's. And then, um, and then I wrestled a little bit in college. And then I started a, a wrestling team out here because I wanted to give mm -hmm. back. I, lo I love the sport. I owe so much to the sport. This taught me everything, and um, so I 
been like uh, coaching out here for years. Started the program in, in, the, in the middle school at uh, Paul Revere Middle School, and I started a high school program. And I just love it so much. There were so many funny things that happened that I would tell my friends, like, that's a movie, that's a movie, that's a movie. So I went out and wrote a movie, and I tried to Indiegogo it and raise a half a million dollars. And I raised wow. 11000 Uh But I got like 97, 970 donors. They gave me like $5 a piece. And they're all like, where the fuck's my movie? You stole my money. This is like a fire festival all over again. So I had to actually go out and like, figure out what to do because now I'm just sitting with people's money and I'm like, I got to give them something. So I went out and shot a pilot. I turned it into a pilot. I yeah. Into a pilot, did it bare bones. I almost got divorced because I didn't tell my wife that I cast this girl who used to be a playmate. We were going to shoot it in my house in our bed. And then she came home and she was like, what are you doing? There's a girl in our bed. And I was like, well, she's like, you have a wife and a kid. And I'm like, well, not in the movie, I don't. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, my God. That's so great. <laughs> and then somebody said quiet on the set. It, that was a disaster. Um, <laughs> but everything's good. And now I'm just trying to sell, sell the TV show. Yeah, so, that is so great. And people don't understand. I mean, <clears throat> kudos. But, you know, you have to save on locations a lot of times with these projects. And – as an actor, I mean, it is hard. I mean, that could you imagine the opposite if you came home and your wife is like, sorry, this big, like, six foot five dude is my husband, you know? And well, that happens every Thursday. Uh, we actually, we have, <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have Cuck Thursday. Uh, oh, that's, like um, that's great. Ah, uh, that's good. All right, let me switch over to Miss Corey Bell for a second. Yo. Uh, Corey Bell, I, of course, you know, uh, we met on uh, Laugh Tracks for True TV. You had your hilarious joke about your son, Juicy. Oh, my God. And um, also, I want to know, so did you actually, how did you become involved with Monique? Because you have been touring with her. You were on the Showtime special with her. And I just see you two have been BFFs about the last year or so. Almost so I just want to know all about that. Yeah, almost two years. And it's exactly how you explained it, like, she was always one of my favorite comedians and I had never met her before. And um, I saw that she was coming to Chicago. I posted it on Instagram and told all of my friends and everybody to tag her and mm -hmm. tell her to let me open up for her. And like five minutes later, she responded and was like, sure, meet me at, you know, the Chicago Improv. And wow. it was like, you know, that was all fine and good, but there were no instructions after that. You know, it wasn't like, hey, you know, this is who you asked for. Beat me at this time. This is. It was just like, all right, show up. And and you know, so at first I was like, I don't know. You know, people say stuff like that all of the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't care how I get on the stage. Either way, go. I'll, I'll if I have to head my way to the back, I'll <laughs> you know I'll get there. And um, like the day before the show, she ended up um, going onto a radio station. And one of the, the dish jockeys, I guess, just brought it up. And she was like, I'm so excited that she's coming. And I can't wait to have her. So I was like, okay, well, shit, she at least remembers me. Um, That's cool. So, yeah, so I met her. I met her there. I went up. I did my five minutes. Mm -hmm. and, um, after that, when I came back, she asked me to finish out the weekend. And after she asked me to finish out the weekend, she asked me if I wanted to go on tour with her. Wow. Um, just like that. And the we we had the one date in um Pleasanton at mm -hmm. Tommy T's. Wow. And after that one date, she was like, you know what? I know I asked you to go on tour, but I'm so sorry to tell you that we have to cancel the tour. Wow. And I was heartbroken because I'm like, right. this is it, this is my dream. And she was like, Well, we have to cancel it um because they just offered me a residency in Vegas and <laughs> yeah, right. to go with me. So and we literally have just kind of been BFFs ever since. I mean, it, it's definitely some growing pains. It's definitely, um, you know, different when you travel with a legend. Yeah. You know? But when I tell you fun from the time we get off the plane to the time that we say goodbye, we have a great time. It's so much fun. I learned so much. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Especially because. You know, people don't know about Monique. They only hear about her in the news stories and everything. So it's nice to, like, let people hear, like, how gracious and uh, what an awesome person she is. And, yeah, I followed you all through that in Vegas. And, I mean, yeah, what a freaking ride. Every night you had, like, a different uh, outfit, which I was always looking forward to. Well, 
Well, you it's, know, cra- it's crazy because I've done that to celebrities that got restraining orders. So it's <laughs> yeah, nice me too, Adam. <laughs> exactly. You know, Vegas, Vegas is like that. You know, Vegas, you get to be whoever you want it to be. Yeah. And I would take it to the extreme with those outfits and one. Oh, that's her calling you. No, it's okay. It's good. <laughs> My wife is trying to interrupt the show. You yeah, know. The I just had to put her on pause. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead. Did we lose you? Are you there? So, Adam, I'm, I'm still. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm still here. Adam, you're there. Well, I mean, we can continue. I don't know. Corey paused out. Uh, everybody, but. That was Monique. She called her again. Yeah, there she is. Oh, there you are. <laughs> are you back? By the way, um, Corey, you are our first driving guest, which is pretty exciting. Be safe, all right? Okay. Are you back? We got you back, yeah? Yeah, can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah, we okay. can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So, well, anyway, uh, I'm going to get to some questions, you guys. And, uh, Adam, I'll start... With you, uh, I'll just throw out these questions and you guys can both answer them. Adam, you can go first. Uh, what is your morning affirmation and uh, uh, what is your nighttime affirmation and what made you choose each? That's a tough one. Like what gets me through the morning? Yeah, uh, what, you Ad- can answer the morning. What gets you up in the morning? Probably Adderall. Cool. Um, and then a nighttime melatonin. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> well, those- Conan, does that make you darker? What is it like? Is that- no, it, it helps me sleep. Uh, it okay. helps me sleep. <laughs> Not melanin. Not, Not melanin. melanin. Sorry. <laughs> I thought he was. Santa, I thought he was taking really something. You're white right now. Yeah. I know right. That, that's uh, yeah. That's that's my that's instead of protesting, I'm taking melatonin. Yeah. You know, to, to like support. Um, everybody out there. Is, can we talk about that, by the way? Like, yeah, that's. I mean, I was gonna get into that. I mean, I, you know, I, I know everybody. That's what we're seeing on our Facebook feeds. Um, but I did want to, Adam, thank you too for kind of opening it up because it is kind of, um, you know, I just time for. Hold on, I'm trying to flash up my right hashtag here. Okay, there we go, folks. Uh, Samson Solutions. You know, everybody talks about the problem, talks about the problem, but I'm gonna ask you guys what. Do you think is the solution to everything going on this trifecta of racism? I mean, from Ahmad Aubrey to Amy Cooper to now uh, the literal uh, death of uh, uh, George Lloyd. Yeah, oh, I'm doing a show. Damn it, man, my kids. What is it? <laughs> now I'm doing a show. Man, I mean, I, how I do you know? I don't those have to deal with I this mean, type of shit. I, I think the, the key is good parenting. Yeah, you know? and just, just, just. I think that's what it starts with: just the family, just teaching your children that everyone's equal, everyone's equally, and, and be nice to everybody, and be try to make everyone happy because it, it's got to come from somewhere, you know. And, yeah. Uh, even that, I, I'm not sure what end racism, but I think that's a good start. Yeah. What do you think, Corey? I don't think that there's one one answer. I don't yeah. think that there's one answer. And the reason that there isn't one answer is because what we're seeing now is not um, like in or a rise in. This is what happens every single day. This is what's been happening right. every single day in one part of the country or another. It's just that the only difference between then and now is we now have the technology to record it and the courage to do so. That's the only difference. Right. The PTSD that we live, I, we live with this shit every, we live with it every day. Every yeah, no, day I, I have, you yeah. know. And, so and you're in Chicago that. too. Yeah, and they downtown right now tearing Chicago up. See, I don't, I don't and, and that's, but th- that's the thing. It's like, like you're 100%. That that obviously has to stop. And that, that it's awful what's going on with, with you know, bad police officers and, and idiots who, who who scream, you know, rape in the fucking park when someone just says put a leash on your dog, you know, that, that's right. ridiculous. But I don't know, I don't think the answer is burning down targets and burning and fucking up people's stores. I mean, there was a guy in Chicago, uh, or was it Chicago yesterday who uh, he put everything into the store 
like he, ba- you know, his whole life savings, a black gentleman, whole life since just opening up a, 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 a restaurant, burned down with no insurance. That's his fault. Like, <laughs> that's just a, one of the things that you have to understand. That's just fucking funny. You you open up a restaurant with no insurance. So I, okay, if, all right. What if a tornado swept through or or a, a anvil fell on it? Look. Oh, okay, it, it, fine, but yeah. that's not his fault. I, I'm not gonna. But that's still not right. It's not right. None of it is right. Dying in, in, in while being videotaped isn't right. Oh no, no, of, of course, none of it's right. No, nobody's saying that anything is right. So, right. So for me, it's like the buildup. It's the buildup, and then when you throw a, a, a BS charge on top of it, because that was just a, the third degree was a pacifier charge. And of I don't know if you guys have heard the autopsy report it's right. like dude we are tired right. i have a husband i have three i have a big a big black husband who when i tell you if most people see him he would he would pose a threat he looks like he would pose a threat nobody's going to run up on my husband they'll shoot him immediately he's that guy i have three huge teenage sons that i i don't even let out of my sight because i have to worry about Who's yeah. Looking at them, what they, you know, so to have to live like that every day, and and then to be slapped in the face when we say, "Hey, look at what y'all doing! Don't do that!" And they're like, mm, you "But know, I'm not sure." But I, I'm not sure. It's black. From, 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 from the news reports, it seems like it's Antifa using this black movement to like destroy things. That is, I absolutely agree with that as well. well. I saw a video of a lot of white guys kind of looting. Thing. I mean, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is a lot of these black uh, Black Lives Matter protests. Um, a lot, a lot of people are white at this point. A majority yeah, of absolutely. the protests, because like you said, Corey, unfortunately, black people are so tired that a majority of these groups are like little, you know, Jewish girls. Yeah, but but I don't even think it's Black Lives Matter. I think it's like, uh, it seems like it's organized people from out of state that are coming in I mean, to wreak havoc. Yeah, I think they are. And it's really diminishing, you know, everything. The purpose of the the whole thing. purpose. And and, and it's also, it's getting people angry. And people are are getting angry at the right people, which is the TNT for people. They're getting angry, oh, look at the black people. And it's not the black people doing that. Right. The black yeah. people, are, the black people are filming the Antifa guys wrecking shit and going. What right. Are you doing? The guy walked and, in with a hammer. And, and I think the guy that, said, "What are you? Yeah. What are you doing with the hammer?" Like, like the guy was. You see the video? The guy with the pizza going. Where the fuck did you come from? Like, why right. do you, the guy had like a? It looked, like, it looked like it was like the penguin from a Batman movie. The guy had yeah. a. They kind of had an umbrella and a hammer. Like, yeah, I saw that. Gadget shows up. And I mean, practicing. and then I've heard people say, oh, the chief of police confirmed that wasn't this Josh Peterson or whoever. But, you know, I think that's a common theme that there there is something funny that happens at, at these uh, during these events. Of course, I don't it, think it doesn't seem like I, I don't think like, looting and all like that, in general, though. It I don't think looting and all that is great. But I think also the main thing <clears throat> we have to look at why. Why is the looted? We can't we can't really be in how people are saying that upset at the looting if we aren't uh, equal well, or more upset at the fact that this cop kneeled. No, I'm upset about that, but I'm also yeah, upset and I'm, I know you are. are. They're, they're, but they're, 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 but life are getting screwed two ways. They're getting screwed with the cops, and, yeah. and they're getting blamed for looting that they're not even doing. Right. right. So not only that. that. Here, here's and here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you when you Black people, we are emotion and emotional people. And one thing that I say has always been a blessing and a curse for or, for us, more so in this situation, more so a curse, is that we always act on emotion first and then logic second. Here's the thing, and, and call it what you want. I believe in tearing shit up. If I'm at, I agree. But here's what I think. Don't tear up your own neighborhood because yeah. when the smoke clears in the morning, what about the 85 year old lady who needs to go to the corner store and get her milk, the mom and pop right. store? So I get Adam what you're saying. I totally understand what you're saying. I ain't gonna lie, when that precinct went up, so be it. Right. So be it. Right. But I yeah, do not way. agree. I do yeah. not agree. Dog, I, I don't agree with tearing up your neighborhood you wanted to if you want to impress me run over the mall of america right tear, tear that up 
Well, right. No Tear up the Starbucks so that all the people in the suburbs he is actually go, fuck up their yeah, Get in your cars and go to the neighborhood where the, where those cops live. If you want to get that angry and you want to, because if you don't hear me when I say, if, if I say, hey, stop that and you continue to do it and then I say to someone in, in yeah. charge and say, hey, I'm trying to tell them to stop that. Mm -hmm. And then they like, you know, F you too. Okay, so now I'm going to make it to where you'll never want to do that again. Right. Because right. apparently you're not understanding what I'm saying. Right. They're not going to protect me or they're going to also do to me what I'm asking you not to. So now I have to act in a way. I can guarantee you if Minneapolis would not have been set on fire, that officer still would not have been. Yeah, of course. Money on it. Yeah, there was literal pressure. They had, they had to bring him in, and they still need to bring the other three officers in. But I mean, I, I yeah, I mean that's that's the thing about it. Again, people need to not be as upset. I have a lot of friends uh, who are so upset about the looting, and that's all they can seem to focus on. Uh, I have friends who see that, oh, they work together at the same security job. Maybe there was a love triangle, you know, trying to remove race from it uh, at any step. And it's like, and I'm speaking, I'm letting you know about what the, uh, uh, you know, some of the- Call what, a spade what, a spade. You know, Call what it they're, what it is. What they're saying to me. And it's, uh, and it's hard to hear that because how can you watch that video, hear the man literally moan for his life. Now we see the autopsy saying that, it was uh, his heart condition and whatnot, um, uh, literally setting it up to get away with it um, when it's like, come on, and Adam, you're you're a wrestler. You're big in the MMA yeah. world. What what do people think about that? I mean, a need of the- No, I, mean, I think that guy, that guy had like 12- The fight, you know? He had like 12 prior convictions. That guy should have had his badge taken away like years ago. There's a bad cop. There are bad cops out there. Yeah. They're, yeah, I, I think a majority of cops are not bad. Yeah, and um, that's the point too. I love police. I just don't like bad police like this. That it's just we can't have anymore. Nobody yeah. does. That's I mean right. because here's the, the the truth of the matter is every cop is not bad. Every white person isn't a racist. Of every course. black person isn't a thug. You know, you take it for what it is. But when you have a situation that keep this is the same movie with a different cast. Yeah. And we keep seeing it over and over and over again. And yeah. on our side, the issue that we have is that we'll protest because we've seen it before. We've seen the uh, Castillo. We've seen the first case of I Can't Breathe. We've seen, like, we have seen the Mike Brown. We've seen this play out over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And then after the march, and once the cameras are gone, we don't fight. And that's the problem. Yeah. We don't we don't want to put the P into the paper. We don't want to help write the let you know, we don't want to make sure that the right people are in Congress. We're not electing the right officials to go into the right places. We are not following yep. through. We as long as the cameras are here, we're jumping around and we're doing what we gotta right. do. And for me, in my humble opinion, Sam, mm -hmm. protest or marching, protesting and marching for me is a primitive display of I'm upset. I yeah. am angry. Yeah, 40s, it's kind 50s, of like yeah. Forties, fifties, and sixties. We had to do that because that was our only means of communication and gathering with each other. That's right a good 20, point. Yeah, you know, right now we have we're so much more advanced because there's so many other ways that we can literally, you know, make a difference. But I understand the detail too. I am because of the yeah, no. and my and, husband, uh, who is who works, you know, he, he works in an area where he is profiled all the time. Hey, Adam, welcome back. Right. Hey, what's going? Hey, I'm sorry. So, Adam, yeah, you're good. Oh, turn your phone sideways, Adam, if you don't mind. Yeah. That was good. We lost you, but we we lost you, but you're right back we in got there. your back, babe. And I think too, you know, yeah, honestly, no, these are a, a, the important conversations that need to happen because I think there's not a lot of crossing of the aisle. What I find out if 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 I'm talking with a lot of my white friends, it's an echo chamber. 
None of them like to hear me talk about black rights. I've been, nope. you know, called a, a fool, a stooge, a crazy, why would you care this, you know, what, what, and whatnot. And, but I think it's important for everybody to hear each other's side because that's the problem. You know, we always hear, oh, but the looting, it's not the way to get the message across. It's just, but what about when Kaepernick was kneeling? They all had just as much of a problem. So, like, if you would have loved when he was kneeling and paid closer attention and not uh, said, we're not watching the NFL games anymore, fuck Kaepernick, oh, he's oppressed with his $10 million mansion. Well, this is what you get when you don't. Now, I don't know about that. Because I, don't I go too far, that. Adam. I mean, when you, they don't pay attention to a peaceful protest, and now we're here. Now, well, I'm not gonna say it, wouldn't have stopped his, it wouldn't have stopped his murder, maybe, but I'm just saying they're, they're equally as mad about when he knelt as when the result of police brutality. I don't know, Samson, because I had zero problem with him. Oh, kneeling. Adam, now we can't hear you. Okay. Ooh, we lost Adam. Adam, we can't hear him. You can't hear me? Hold on. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, maybe I just can't. Go ahead. I can. Go ahead, Adam. I can hear you. I said you. I don't agree with that because I had zero problem with Kaepernick kneeling. I, I thought it was I thought it was a great expression. I think he was in the right. I with people setting fire to, to police cars and to regular cars and looting and, and shit. I don't want to have to leave my house right now. I, 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 I live right near Fairfax. Uh, I don't want right. to go move right now because because people think it's okay to go into stores and take people's shit. And yeah, no, and I'm not saying that's okay at all. I'm just saying a lot of the people who, you know, even the same people who were first, I had a lot of friends who never have called Trump a racist, but were the first to tell me that, oh, do you see Biden is racist now? He told, he said, uh, you know, he said, if you don't vote for <laughs> Trump, you're not black or whatever. And he's like, what do you think about that, Sammy? He's a racist. And I was like, okay, well, on the racist scorecard, he's, we're like 30 to four, you know, Trump is still winning. But it's yeah. just funny. I'm like, you guys have never, and, you know, Adam, of course, you and I, Adam, I consider to be in the cool white guy category. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've been doing comedy for years, you forever, in uh, predominantly black rooms, rooms all over the world. So, we're, you know, we're, in a sense, unique white guys. When I'm talking about white guys, I'm usually talking about you know, you're more conservative, uh, not necessarily have a lot of black relationships. So they only view black people from entertainment and in situations like this on the TV. Yes. And to agree with what you're saying, from a white person, rural, you know, perspective, they're just seeing black people looting and BLM as a terrorist group. And Antifa is, you know, so they have all these buzzwords and you're right. A lot of times the looting to white people, they just, they can't get past it, but they don't understand how terrible it is and what leads to the powder keg exploding. No, well, right. and yet, let, and let me be really, oh, I, I can't hear Adam, but let me just be very, here. very clear. Uh, I, I don't agree with the looting either. I no think one does. I, I don't agree I mean, with the loot. I mean, because what does stealing the items out of Target have to do with what is going on? I totally agree. But it, it's what happens when you have one thing going on. It, it, it's just how it happens. It how it, It's how it happens. And a lot of it, again, like you said, it's not even us. It's not even no. us. It's, it's, it's the painting of the picture to make it seem like we are this terroristic threat or, you know, so I get it. I yeah, but like, it, okay, but can you hear me now? But like, but like, what, what do we Teigen, do? But like Chrissy Teigen tweets out. What do we do? Chrissy, Go ahead, Adam. Like Chrissy, Chrissy Teigen tweets out, I will give out $200,000 for any protesters bail. And I'm, and I wrote back, like, first of all, what are we saying as a protester? A guy with a sign who gets arrested because they're not going to get a, that guy's not getting arrested. So, like, okay, it's easy to say I fucking I'm all for looting and rioting when you're in a fucking Hollywood mansion, you know, with thirty million dollars. But when people start running around, whether they're white, black, Asian, Mexican, whatever, and start going into your fucking house and taking your shit, you're not going to be all for these fucking this. Oh, go ahead, riot! I'm going to bail people out. So I think I think a lot of people from a distance, people are cheering. Yeah, go, go, go. But 
you can't have fucking anarchy. You, you, you can't do it. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not the kind of country where, where you, you do that. I mean, maybe you can, but it, it's not going to end well. Yeah. Well, it's certainly right now, too, and we have, uh, you know, our president is stoking the fire. I mean, we just... He's an idiot, too. I mean, politically, I mean, you know, Adam, I'm sure you have a joke. I, you know, they're, the, the, our nation is sick with a deadly virus, and it's not corona. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, you know, but again, I think all these conversations are very healthy. Are. Because, look, uh, there just has to be a solution because... The thing is, what a lot of white people I find have a hard time admitting is you just would never see a white person squashed on the ground to death like that by any color police officer. You know, I know for a fact the way I look, uh, the way I know how to act with my privilege, and I'm Jewish, but, you know, I have the choice whether to be Jewish or not. You know what I mean? Like I, like you, I mean, you're Jewish, right, Adam? You know, you can be, you can have people... You know, I know people don't love Jewish people, so I have the option of telling people that or not. And, you know, the thing about it is just what people have to just accept is you just wouldn't see this happen to a, a white person. We haven't seen it, you know, yeah. and then the fact that and, and uh, you know, they were allowed to storm the Capitol building in Michigan with, you know, armed rifles and guns. And, if, and we know if a black militia did that, um, there would be a civil war. Yeah. Um, so that, those are just the things that <clears throat> this whole thing is sparked, you know, and so much history. And even let's just say that we're not even talking about what has happened with the police. Let's just take the pandemic. Let's just take the pandemic right now. Let's right. Throw that in. Social, all so, social distancing and how that's being handled on the white side and how it's right. being handled on the black side. Yeah. You know, we, we, we can we can look at that. I'm in Chicago. So, you know, I am I ride through the place and I get it. I'm looking at these people like y'all are crazy. Right. Like, like why are y'all together? And I get it. The problem that I have is you got all of these people and y'all are together. And you're congregating and you don't know if you're asymptomatic or you got it sure. or what. And if you want to kill you, that's fine. But these are also the same people that work in our grocery stores and at our banks and, and, and at our fast food places. And like you, the Walmarts, you guys are responsible for me in, yeah. in, in one way or another. But when we go and we go outside and we're looking at people that are socially distancing and you have on the Upper East Side where the white people are being handed masks by the police right. and right. on the other side you're being wrestled to the ground. Right, that's you know, the difference. You know, it, 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 it's it's just different. I don't care where you are or what. It's different and people won't acknowledge it. And if you don't, it's like, see me. I don't have a right. choice in this. This is not, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. Truth be told, if they were left up to me, I would have been a little bit darker and probably a little taller. And I didn't get <laughs> the black girl ass to keep talking <laughs> about. I, this bitch <laughs> missed it. Okay. I didn't get that. Okay. So I consider myself biracial because I'm hilarious. Caucasian in the back. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but seriously, it's like we're different. We have to have the conversations, like you said, Sam. Yeah, we have to have them. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's the thing. It's you. It's getting through to uh, you know everybody has their talking points uh, wherever they get them from. Um, it's kind of like going through them, and and unfortunately, like I've said, as a white guy, no another white person doesn't like to hear it from me or doesn't really believe it. So it's nice. Cause you have to hear somebody else's experience. You know, I got into a fight with somebody on Facebook who thought Amy Cooper, uh, the woman in central park was right because that man threatened her dog and do 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 do. And I told her she obviously used nine one one as a weapon. She weaponized nine one one. You could see in the video. Thank thankfully we had the video cause by audio, you might not be able to tell that, but you see her escalate when she gets on the call and starts acting up. And so I just got in a fight with this woman cause she was just saying how, oh, if somebody did that to my dog, I would freak out. I'm just like, I can't, you can't help everybody. Um, and so it's like recognizing who can maybe listen to the message and then who's crazy and when to just kind of keep keep moving, you know? Yeah, cause some of them just nuts. The but, problem is those that are, are the ones that can actually get me killed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? and that's, and that's the difference too. I don't have to, I didn't have to tell my son today at all, be careful about the police. 
the police saw my saw my kids they probably be like those are the cutest kids ever so it's like why can't black kids uh be afforded that yeah. um but guys i think I this I is great really cute black kids yeah, there you go. I mean, this was a great show. I had other things planned, of course. You know, we took this, but I think it was important to have this conversation. Um, so I'm going to let you guys go. Enjoy your Saturdays. <clears throat> but thank you guys so much for doing this show. And real quick, just tell everybody where they can find you, Corey. I'm going to flash up your social media right here. Yes, you guys can find me on everything at Corey B, C O R R E Y B. That's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, now on um, Urban Flicks with Laugh Tonight with Damon Williams that just okay. dropped yesterday. Okay. Um, Pornhub, RedTube, X videos. I want all this. <laughs> Adam, if it don't work out in comedy, I got to be able to do something, dog. That is oh, yeah. hilarious. Oh yeah. What it's about what about you could be in the biracial category? Biracial. That, oh my god, that's so great. The biracial category. What about you, Adam? Tell them where we can find you, man. Uh you can follow me at Adam Comedian. Thank you, Samson. Thank you, Corey. You guys are great. I really appreciate you guys having me. Adam yeah. Comedian and everything. Thank you, you guys. Thank you guys. That was that was fun. You can find me at Samson Crouppen. Let me uh let me cue up my music real quick before I get you guys out of here. Um, and have a great Saturday. Drink something on me. And we'll see you next Saturday. Thank you, Corey. I love you.